Guys, welcome back. And today's topic, IP65 consumer units. Now, I am not going to sit here and lambast anyone, but let's talk about the risks associated with them. Are there better alternatives? And why on earth has it become such a big topic in the industry? So let's get straight into it, okay? IP65 consumer units have been around an awful long time, an awful, awful long time. And they were originally designed for areas that have damp and moisture and high humidity, okay? But they were always fitted internally. Very, very rarely would it be that you'd actually find an IP65 consumer unit external to a dwelling property or building in general. So why has that now completely changed? Why has the IP65 consumer unit probably outsold most other sizes, okay, across the UK? Now, the reason for that is obviously being the drive to EV. And we can talk about solar and things as well, but predominantly this started with the drive to EV. And what I mean by that is the electrification of the automobile industry has taken the UK by storm. They've got massive targets they want to hit and zero combustion engines, I think, in manufacturing by 2030. Okay, now let's not get into the politics of all that. Let's talk about it from an electrician's point of view. You are now being asked to fit an EV charger on someone's dwelling. Okay, 7.2 kilowatts tends to be the standard unit, regardless of brand. Now that will be fitted, obviously, externally, because that's where your car is parked, unless you live in an absolute mansion where you park the car in the living room or something crazy like that. Okay, but essentially the EV charger is external to the property, which means we are now faced with two obstacles as an installer. Okay, one is what is the current state of play of the existing consumer unit, i.e. can it actually handle a circuit of this magnitude? It's gonna have DC current on it, are there AC RCDs in there? Is there space in the board? This has got to be fitted to an RCBO. It's got to be onto a device that switches both the line and the neutral. So there's obviously already a lot of questions that we're asking of the existing consumer unit. Now let's say for whatever reason, let's say it's been a fairly new board and you could actually fit an additional RCBO in there with a switch neutral functionality to make that install compliant. Fantastic. But now let's say the location of the board is an absolute pig to get from, from A to B, okay? And we've all been in that situation where you've looked at it and thought, how the hell am I gonna get that from there to there without causing me a whole host of problems or cost messed or damaged to the actual home? Well, these are all challenges we face, okay? So even as a reputable electrician, who holds themselves to a high standard, you may be faced with a situation where you don't want to do a big run or something like that. And the most convenient installation is that of an IP65 consumer unit, usually found in a meter cupboard, where you can split the tails or whatever you want to do from there, okay? So running from there straight out into a EV board, shall we call it, from there straight into your EV charger. Problem solved, one might think, okay? Well, that then took a life of its own. And rather than being a method of last resort, became the norm okay so with that you had installers whether they be fully qualified electricians ev installers um you know uh, whatever it might be okay fitting these boards as a standard for ev chargers i know that there are certain companies out there that all they do is for ev chargers and their installers get a kit and in that kit they'll have the charger the cable and everything else and in that will also form an ip65 consumer unit so there's not even an attempt to see if there's a better solution. That's where the problem has now started to arise. Because we've standardized this type of installation, we've also standardized the risk associated with it. Now, in a previous video, I talked about, is an IP65 consumer unit actually rated at IP65? And I mentioned that it is, okay, of course it is. However, once you drill a hole in it, that completely changes it. And the way you test IP65 units with jets coming from all different directions for a sustained period of time, et cetera, et cetera. It's impossible to repeat those tests on site. No matter what you do, you are likely gonna suffer ingress at some stage of that board's life. Now let's park all of that. Let's park thermal derating factors because I could do a whole video on that and I actually have done a few in the past, okay? Let's just take it from a practicality and compare it like for like. If you were to install an outdoor socket, standard 13 amp outdoor socket, okay, which we've come accustomed to calling an IP65 socket. And I think that's a lot of the problem, right? We fit an IP65 socket, IP65 consuming it. They're the same, right? We fit them both outside. Think about the challenges you face with an IP65 socket. 
So you fit an IP65 socket that draws less than 13 amps irregularly. And if you go back to that socket within a year or two, what do you find within the enclosure? Without fail, you will find moisture, sometimes moss, insects, all sorts of things. And you can talk about you putting a drain hole in, you can talk about putting these different glands in, and all these other things, okay? And for an IP65 socket, we're going to these lengths to worry about the moisture ingress within the unit. That's fine. Yet on an IP65 consume unit, we don't even ask the question. Now let me put some facts to you, okay? And these are some I googled earlier. Now, I know you shouldn't believe everything you read on the internet, but I think these are fairly solid. The average temperature in 2023 across the winter months, okay, was two degrees. Now that includes night and day. So the average temperature of each day during the winter months last year was two degrees. The average running temperature of an RCBO in the UK, now bear in mind some brands do run a lot warmer than others, okay, but the average temperature is 38 degrees. Okay. If you put something that is running at 38 degrees in an enclosed environment where the ambient temperature is two degrees, what are you going to find on the inside of that enclosure? Moisture, an awful lot of moisture. Now, let's add some real world into this. When do most people charge their vehicles? Well, most people charge their vehicles at night because of the tariffs, okay? So at night, the average temperature in the winter months last year was minus four degrees. Now, that is a UK average. Some places it's going to be warmer. Some places it's going to be a lot colder, right? But that was the average temperature at the coldest points during the evenings, okay? Now, that RCBO's running temperature has not changed. But you are pulling 30 amps on average across that RCBO. So it's going to be running warm. It's going to be running close to capacity, and it's going to be running warm, okay? So your moisture is going to be amplified. And you're going to be charging that most days because don't forget batteries don't actually retain their charge as well during the colder months. So you're going to be charging your car more frequently as well. So the risk of just ingress isn't just the associated damp and moisture coming into the unit. It's actually the risk of the moisture created within the unit from the devices doing what you've asked them to do. This is huge. Now, there have been certain um, case studies from certain lighting manufacturers who make outdoor lights and uh, sight lights and all these sorts of things where you get water ingress actually coming up the conductor, okay, within an IP65 situation because of the condensation created within the enclosure. Now, you're going, what are the hottest areas within that consumer unit? The hottest area is going to be in and around the terminals and the back of the devices themselves, okay? So, you are going to create a damp structure within the devices. You're going to create damp within the enclosure. Those buzz bars are copper. They are not very good when they get damp or moist. And you are going to create an issue that over time is going to compound and become a larger risk for the homeowner, for the charger, for the install, for you. So let's bring this back to center, okay? Do I think IP65 consume units outside for EV chargers are a good solution? Absolutely not. I think when you weigh up all the risks, it far outweighs any, any reward, okay? However, however, I do understand that sometimes you are faced with very, very, very limited options and it might be the only way you can get this install completed. So what could you do? Well, I did speak to one electrician and we, and we had a conversation back and forth about how he was going to try and manage this external consumer unit. And it wasn't actually for an IP, um, for an EV charger, it was for something else. And he'd agreed that as part of the installation, there would be a maintenance aspect of this kind of ongoing contract, if you wanted to call it that, right, for this, for this installation. A nominal fee where they'd come back every year to check it and check the actual structural integrity inside the consumer unit. Now, this contractor openly admitted that his client had the budget for that. Okay, so he can afford 100 quid a year, the electrician to come around, have a look, make sure there's no damage or the ingress is limited, clean out the consume unit, change a buzz bar if you need to, making sure there's nothing happening where the moisture is damaging uh, the, the breaker or the basically the integrity of the consume unit. That's fantastic. A lot of people won't have that budget, especially in today's economy. 
So there's lots of things to consider here, okay? Can you make it safe? In my opinion, not really. Um, not as a, a, a 12 month solution. I really don't think it is a viable option. Uh, I think there needs to be more research done. I think manufacturers, you guys need to take a lot more responsibility as well. I understand that everyone's under pressure at the moment and this is an easy sell. Installers, this is an easy fix. But as an industry, I think we need to raise our standards. Um, we at Navitas, even though we're getting pressure for it all the time, um, we will not, we will not, I repeat, be launching an IP65 consumer. I could go to any factory in China. I can, I can speak to my business partner who owns a factory that you know, makes all of our boards and we could develop one like that. Uh, there's plenty on the market. There's more actually entering the market. Brands that you guys have all used are now offering them, um, knowing full well, knowing full well that what they're going to be used for. And I do think we as an industry need to make a stand against the risk. We would do it with anything else. And unfortunately, I think it's going to take something like a fire for, for a reaction to actually happen. But this, I honestly think, could be the, the PPI scam. Uh, not scam, that's not fair, but the PPI reward claim against your install, EV charger install, that uh, that we had 20 years ago with PPI and things like that. So installers, just be aware, there are a countless level of risks with this. It's starting to, the noise is starting to grow. I'm an advocate for getting them, not banned, but certainly reassessed. Um, and if there is a better alternative, uh, and it is, you know, again, if you have a last resort situation, uh, there has to be some kind of contingency in place. But that's my humble opinion. Um, and again, see, I'm not pumping product. It's not a situation here. I could make a lot of money if we launched one. You know, I'm leaving money on the table by standing on principle. So again, entirely up to you guys what you do. My two pennies worth. Um, and I hope that you all, all um, take your own advice, take the advice of other industry bodies, um, but really think about your next EV charger installation and whether an IP65 consume unit is worth the risk to you and the client that you're servicing. Okay, guys, thank you very much for your time. Before I jump out, I just want to say a huge, huge thank you to Weha. So as you might be aware, um, we are doing an awful lot of our consumer unit assembly now here in the UK, down in South Wales. They have provided all of our torque screwdrivers and all of the tools that we need to assemble your consumer units. It's the only, only range of um, drivers and everything else we use to assemble your consumer units. So again, they're not sponsored this video or anything else. It was just a personal from me to them. So thank you very much for that support. Uh, and also, if you haven't yet, go and check out OM Electrical. He has launched his own range of merch, which is Stay Grafting. I got mine the other week and it is awesome. Now, I put it back in the bag um, simply just to show you how it comes. I would definitely recommend, guys, support one of our own. Get on there, uh, have a go. It's, uh, the, the quality of the stuff is really, really good and it's quite competitive too. Unfortunately, I'm not actually a social influencer, so I don't have a discount code for you, but I'm sure uh, there might be a few floating around. But yeah, support one of our own guys. And, uh, and yeah, guys, until next time, take care.